hello and welcome to this review of my IBM Wheelwriter keyboard. The IBM Wheelwriter was introduced in 1984 as the successor to the extremely popular and influential Selectric typewriter. The Selectric more or less completely dominated the entire typewriter market after its introduction and was a technologically very interesting machine based on a set of whiffle tree mechanisms. The Selectric used a bizarre typing element shaped like a golf ball which was tilted and rotated to select the right character and subsequently thrown forward to type the desired character. It's a very intriguing mechanism and doubtlessly one of IBM's greats. The wheel writer was largely forgettable and nowhere near as interesting using a simple daisy wheel typing element like this instead, which was simply rotated into place. It was much faster than the Selectric, but nowhere near as interesting and I don't think it quite dominated the market to the degree the Selectric had. You could use different wheels depending on what character set you wanted, and this one is a prestige elite which sounds incredibly snobbish even for IBM standards. I found one at the recycling center a while ago, but because the writer was broken and it was way too much for me to move anyway, I decided to just take off the keyboard module, which is connected via these ribbon connectors at the back here. If that makes you think of the IBM Model M, which also had ribbon connectors, you're right. The wheel writer also used a membrane buckling springs mechanism that the Model M used, and they were both first released in 1984, so they're a concurrent design. Just like the Model M, it is driven by a set of membranes which is held to the barrel plate by a system of melted plastic rivets, although unlike the Model M's, which are generally black, these ones are white. A problem, and one of the M's very few weaknesses, is that these would become brittle with age and break off, as has happened here with about 10 of them. It also doesn't have any controllers itself, these were presumably all typewriter side. This particular one was quite dirty and heavily used when I got it, but because these keyboards clean out very well and because it's pretty well built, this is pretty hard to tell if you're looking at it. The typewriter itself was heavy as shit as well, although that was pretty normal for typewriters. It does have this annoying wall thing at the back here, which is constantly in the way, even if I can't actually use this thing. Specifically, this one is from a Wheelwriter 10 Series 2, <laughs> yeah, of course, I wasn't going to leave the badge. As you can tell from the sticker at the back, the keyboard module was made in 1989, which is fairly old, and indeed it still has the older rainbow backplate that the earliest M's had as well. The whole system was assembled in 1990 though, as is listed on this barely legible sticker which fell off the back. Being a typewriter, the layout is a bit different from normal, although this one's is relatively close to that of a Model M. At the left, there are a few typewriter-specific buttons, and the legends on some of them are a bit weird, like caps lock, that reads just lock, and enter, which reads CRTN, short for carriage return. But overall, it's not that weird. It even has a regular T-nav here. It's almost a 10 keyless when you think about it. There's a ribbon with shortcut keys at the top, and a whole bunch of LEDs at the right here with its own legend above it. There was supposed to be a white code key here, but unfortunately it's missing. And because I don't have any 2.75 unit white keycaps with the stabilizer on the right side, I use two small left shifts to cover it up normally. Although this thing really isn't a replacement for a Model M, the M has a better layout and is actually a standalone keyboard, whereas this is not, and it's rarer to boot, it does have one upshot, it's keycaps. They're the standard buckling springs mount, and as such they can be used on any Model M or Model F, and this is where it gets interesting, because they are awesome. They're the one-piece type, and they're thick PBT with dye-sublimed printing, which is why it hasn't yellowed and only barely become shiny, even after all that use. If you look at the reflection, you can see it's a bit shinier than usual for an IBM keycap, but it's still infinitely better than it would have been if it were ABS. Better yet, a whole bunch of them are double dice sub with these cool, deep green secondary legends. A few of them have grey sub-legends instead, and the funky symbols and text make them look really nice. 
I have a very good looking 138803 Model M here, which also has really cool keycaps, especially on the numpad, which has these deep blue sublegends. And this one has a few funky terminal caps on the nav cluster too. If you combine the two, that is the numpad from the M and the main block and nav keys from the wheel writer, you end up with this really cool Model M key set, which fits the industrial case exceptionally well in my opinion. And they're all IBM originals too. Overall, this thing is basically a funny curiosity, plus a really cool keycap donor. But apart from that, its uses are limited in my opinion, unless you have the whole wheel writer, but then you're basically just using the typewriter that wasn't as cool as the Selectric. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.